With one week in Prague, we hit the ground running trying to see and experience as much as we could in the Golden City. We had high expectations and Prague's beauty and charm managed to exceed all of them. It's a city we thoroughly enjoyed and wanted to share with you. Now here's a look at 35 things you can do in Prague. Prague Castle is the largest ancient castle in the world and is home to several palaces as well as a cathedral, a basilica and gardens. You can also visit the neighborhood of Novi Svet which is right behind the castle. So we're here now in Novi Svet. It's a cool little neighborhood right behind the castle and I must say this is one of my favorite places so far. It's so quiet and peaceful and I love the cobblestone road. Here we are at the Kafka Museum. Now, Franz Kafka was a German language writer who was born here in Prague, so this museum is dedicated to him and his works, and you'll find some of his letters, diary entries, and photographs inside. And in the courtyard, you'll notice a rather strange sculpture entitled The Piss. Stroll along the John Lennon wall, and you'll encounter portraits of Lennon and Yoko Ono. The graffiti is always evolving, so you never know what you'll find. Right now we are visiting Prague's TV tower, and the strangest thing about this structure is that there are babies crawling up and down. Have a look! Next, we have a big plate of goulash. Now, goulash is actually Hungarian, but the Czech Republic does have its own variety. What differs between the two is that the Hungarian is usually served with meat, noodles, and vegetables, and the one from the Czech Republic only has meat. So, let's dig in. Smells amazing. Mm. The meat is really soft and tender, and the sauce is so thick and savory. It's perfect on a cool day. If you find yourself in Prague on a Saturday, head over to this market where you'll be able to pick up some pastries and organic products. It's a great place for a leisurely brunch. So we're here at a local market on a Saturday morning and I've picked up myself a Balkan burger. Take a big bite of this. Mm. That's really good. It's a bit early in the day to be having burgers, but this is amazing. Prague's Old Town is a place you can't miss. The elegant buildings and varying pastels are a place that you'll want to photograph. absolutely have to do when you're in Prague is visit the old town city square and if you come early in the morning there's hardly anyone St. Vitus is a gothic cathedral located within the walls of Prague Castle inside you'll be able to admire beautiful stained glass windows designed in the Art Nouveau style Going north from the Old Town Square, you'll find yourself in the Jewish Quarter, and right now we're just visiting some of the local synagogues. Inside the KGB Museum, you'll find old propaganda as well as some unusual pieces like a copy of Lenin's Death Mask. The Golden Lane gets its name because legend has it that Emperor Rudolf was a fan of alchemy. He had alchemists working tirelessly to find a way to turn metal into gold and to find the secret to eternal life. Charles Bridge is one of the most popular landmarks in the city. 
If you walk across during the day, you'll find musicians, artists, and vendors selling souvenirs. Prague's Museum of Communism takes a look at the post-World War II communist regime. Expect to see lots of posters heavy on propaganda. You can check out the astronomical clock. It goes off every hour and it's straight in the heart of the old town. You can't come to Prague and not sample the street food. One particularly popular item is the turtleneck. You can order it with icing sugar, or if you're feeling adventurous, ask for Nutella on the inside. One of the things I love most about travel is the unexpected surprises. We didn't have this particular activity on our schedule, but here we are out feeding swans. For really great views of the city, you can consider taking the funicular up the hill, but I think we're going to be doing it on foot because there's a really long line right now. Petrin Tower stands 63 meters high on a hill overlooking Prague. It slightly resembles the Eiffel Tower in Paris, and it's a fairly easy climb to the top. finished visiting the maze of mirrors which is kind of a cool activity it's more geared towards children but it's still a fun thing to do Bisharat is a historical fort located in the city of Prague here you'll find the ruins of Prague's other castle as well as a cemetery that's the resting place for many of Prague's great artists and thinkers For a leisurely afternoon, hop on a river cruise and enjoy a scenic journey down the Voltava River. In my hand here, I've got myself a Pilsner beer. And this is like a Czech institution. It's known for its golden color and high level of foam and a nice light taste. Okay, take a drink already. And the best thing about it, it's cheaper than water and cola. Chug, 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 chug. And you know I'll be having more than one. After all that sightseeing around the city, you'll likely want some time to relax. The Yeleny Prikop Park, located right behind Prague Castle, is a great place for a picnic or a little nap on the grass. One cool little fact, even though the National Museum is currently closed, you can still attend musical performances in the evening. So it's worth checking out, see if you're interested in any of the concerts, and that way you can get a peek inside. The Dancing House is a building which stands out from the rest, done in the deconstructive style. So here I've got absinthe in my hand. It's an anise flavored spirit and it's extremely popular here in Prague. You can see it all over in all kinds of different stores. So I'm gonna give it a try. This is my first time to taste it. It's 
going to give it a little bit of a, a go. Oh, wow. It's very strong, but it has a, a licorice-like flavor. And I have to say, I quite enjoy it. This afternoon we are doing something that I'm very excited about. There's an activity here in Prague called Mind Maze and basically we're going to be locked in the alchemist's room for an hour and we have to go through clues and try to figure a way out. So it should be an interesting activity. took a lot of teamwork and thinking together and trying to agree on trying to find a solution to solve this puzzle. It was really complicated. We actually weren't able to get out of the chamber within 60 minutes and we had to keep buzzing for clues but it was a lot of fun and I would highly recommend it if you're here in Prague. If you tire of walking, segways are a fun way to get around the cobble streets. Another cool thing you can do is visit the Miniature Museum where you can see microscopic art. The Mucha Museum pays homage to Alphonse Mucha and it's a must visit if you enjoy Art Nouveau. The tram is an easy and inexpensive way to get around the city, plus it offers more of a local experience. to explore the city in a more luxurious way, we've seen people taking luxury car tours. So right now we are standing outside the National Museum. Now unfortunately this place is closed until 2016 because it's undergoing renovations. However, the collection itself is spread across 10 museums here in Prague, so you can still visit those. It's a bit of a steep walk to reach the monastery, but the long climb offers great views of the city below. Also, the library inside the monastery is certainly worth a peek. And that sums up our visit to Prague. Our one week in the city left us charmed and it's a place that we'd be happy to revisit again. What are some of your favorite things to do in the city? Please let us know in the comment section below. For more travel and food videos, hit subscribe.